for life. Hi, Dr. Mark here from Natural Health. Hope you're having a great day. Uh, we've decided to come back to our health shops we had going on there. We for a little bit trying to have uh, folks come into the office for our page education workshops, but uh, I think people have kind of gotten used to staying home after work uh, and uh, with the COVID thing, everybody's like got used to that. So we decided to go back to the health shops that we're going to have here live on Facebook and Instagram at 6.15 normally. We'll do a little bit again today, but uh, normally 6.15 on every Monday night that we're, that we're in the office. So uh, that should be quite a while except for probably Labor Day coming up. Anyway, uh, so Dr. Mark here, I've uh, been in practice now for 42 years, somewhere in there, uh, <clears throat> doing nutrition and chiropractic. And so this is the chiropractic office uh, where we're looking at ways of helping the body to be healthy and in good shape and have lots of energy and not using drugs or surgery. So it's, a, it's an alternative type office here. And our goal was really helping people to be healthy, uh, not just pain relief. Uh, many, many chiropractors do that, and that's fine for neck and back pain. But we're looking at more, what chiropractic can do more with the body and what nutrition can do. So we've given the body with the chiropractic the ability to, to have the nervous system control itself and be able to work with itself to heal. And then with nutrition, giving the body the building blocks it needs uh, to have uh, the ability to heal itself and removing barriers like heavy metal toxicity and different things like that. So uh, a pretty good combination with nutrition and chiropractic. So I'm going to start talking about nutrition today. Um, we're looking at what we call uh, this month, looking at summer fun. And so summer fun is just uh, being able to handle summer, uh, the heat and some of the things that go on there. I'm going to talk a lot about salt today, about hydration really, uh, and what hydration uh, takes. So um, again, you know, we're all playing outside and especially in the water, uh, the water and another thing, uh, you, you, you feel cool with the water and the water evaporates. Uh, so, so does your sweat evaporates when it's hot like the body's cooling itself by, by sweating. Um, and so the body needs a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, water and electrolytes to be healthy. Now, what are electrolytes? Well, electrolytes is just a fancy word for salt. Uh, so as we get into here, again, even the stresses of, of doing things during the summer. Now, hopefully most of your stresses in the summer are fun things. You know, like boating and uh, and uh, you know the, the, and all the kind of things we do during the summertime. But again, uh, looking at the hydration issue and getting plenty of water, but that's just half of it. And the trouble is, a lot of people will drink a lot of water, but we've been trained our brain wars basically not to use salt. Now, the problem with that word salt is that uh, good food there and the outside running, uh, and just enjoying the outdoors. Uh, and the sunshine and all that good stuff. Uh, but salt has been given a bad, uh, bad uh, name because of the processed white junk salt that is put on everything. Any processed food, any restaurant you go to, or almost any restaurant, uh, any, any kind of processed food, uh, any foods you get, like takeout and things, that's all going to be using the wrong form of salt, or salt that is just sodium chloride. Now, s real salt that comes from the earth, uh, like sea salt or mineral salt, has all the minerals in there that's supposed to be there so that you use the sodium chloride correctly. And the body uh, actually can use that to uh, get the kidneys to work to balance the water. Uh, and the people drink just a lot of water, they actually wash the salts out of their body and they'll feel really tired in the summer. A lot of leg cramps are due to the muscle spasm and things. So, uh, like you know, we talk about swimmers that get in and, and, and uh, you, they have leg cramps and stuff. Well, a lot of times it's just a lack of salt. You get in, we're getting uh, through the sports season, we have baseball now, and eventually football. As that comes in, a lot of the athletes will, you know, they get, you know, almost passing out because of lack of hydration. And if they do that, uh, if they do pass out and they have to go to the hospital, well, guess what they use for the IV? They use saline solution in the IV. What is saline solution? Saline solution is salt and water. <laughs> so the medics know this, but they don't tell anybody about this stuff, and especially this deal about the salt, why, why mineral salt, heat salt is good for you, and why processed white salt is junk and does cause trouble, and, and you retain fluid that causes blood pressure issues, things like that. So uh, sea salt is good for you, yes. The premise is that salt leads to hypertension has never been scientifically supported. 
Again, uh, you know, we have this myth going on that salt's going to cause high blood pressure. So I have many people come in here that just don't eat any salt. You know, there's no salt. And, and that's really a bad thing. And they, of course, they don't feel good. And usually a lot of medications because they have a lot of symptoms from that. And they're on medications to cover up those symptoms. So we want to use the correct kind of salt. And of course, uh, in a common sense type of way. So salt aids blood sugar control by improving insulin sensitivity. Uh, it's a natural antihistamine because it helps your, your lymphatics to drain the gunk out. Uh, a lot of gunk out there like pollen and dust and things like that. And so it's important you drain it out. Your body needs salt to maintain the proper uh, stomach pH. Uh, and that fully is the, uh, not only in the stomach, but the whole digestive system, the whole urinary tract system, lymphatic system, <laughs> everything. Uh, the, the pH is a big deal. And so we do a lot of work here in our office working on hydration with folks because it's such a simple thing to help with. Um, and people just don't even think about it. I mean, many people, I mean, we've had patients come in who don't drink any water. They're drinking soda and tea and coffee and things like that, but never drink water. And they wonder why they have degenerative disease or the C word or all this kind of stuff. And it's just a matter of getting the body uh, to get hydrated. That helps you to flush out all the toxins and, and the metabolic byproducts and the things that the body goes through every day. And the salt part of it helps keep that pH right to keep the buggies under control, um, you know, help again with the stomach acid so that you have the right kind of acid so you digest your food, all kind of things that, that salt uh, is, is important for, and then with water too. Improves your sleep quality, adequate salt consumption, encourages a healthy weight and fast metabolism. Again, uh, especially most salt that is real salt has iodine in it, helps your thyroid to work. And I know there's people out there that think they're allergic to iodine. I mean, human beings have been around iodine forever, so that's kind of an off thing. I think a lot of times when people have problems with iodine, it's because their thyroids are so weak, they just can't handle it. So anyway, we do some work with that here. Don't use a lot of iodine, but some, especially in your mineral salts and sea salt, have that in there already. Um, supports thyroid function, of course, again, uh, of the iodine in there and other minerals, and that supports your healthy metabolism and weight loss. Supports um, hyperosmolarity of the extracellular fluids. That just means that the, the body can drain fluid correctly. The lymphatics work. That's what that means, really. And we want the lymphatics to work to drain the toxins out of the body, to drain the snot and the mucus, the byproducts of the body fighting whatever it's fighting infection and different things like that. Uh, Anakin salt supports balanced hormones. And, of course, it makes food taste good. And why does it make food taste good? Well, because your body has a, a, a taste for sugar, salt, and fats. That's just how our body is, what it works, and it wants those things. So normally sugars in nature have a lot of minerals that come with them. If the, the fruits and things that you get into, even vegetables really have a lot of good sugars in them, not near as much as fruits, but if you're not, uh, you know, if your sweet tooth is under control and you eat some good vegetables, they actually taste sweet, believe it or not. So, and uh, we want to work towards that, uh, towards getting a lot of vegetables and not so much fruit uh, fruit is meant to be only used at certain times, and a lot of times people think they have to have fruits and vegetables every day. Well, if you just have the vegetables, you don't need the fruit part. Yeah, that has a lot of sugar in it. Uh, so uh, what salt is the best? Well, again, sea salt or mineral salt. Uh, we like to use Celtic sea salt here in the office. Uh, the pink Himalayan salt is good. There's others out there, but sometimes they don't work as well for certain people. Um, how much salt should I eat? The average adult needs about a level teaspoon per day, something like that. And we have ways of checking the body to see if they need more salt for their hydration needs. People that work outside a lot, uh, like, you know, especially concrete, anything around concrete, you know, those kind of construction jobs, they need a lot more um, salt because they're sweating a lot more as the day goes on. So that's just a quick little blurb on uh, how to help uh, summer be fun and by just getting, again, a good hydration, uh, good sea salt, mineral salt, and good water. And by water, too, we're talking about spring water. We want to watch the sources of water uh, because, again, if you're getting chlorinated, fluorinated junk water, uh, you're, you're, you're getting water, but you're also getting a lot of toxins in that, too. So you want to get you know, either good filtered water, uh, spring water, those kind of things. Now, distilled water uh, is okay to use for a short-term detox, but there's no minerals in it at all. And it's an acid water, so you want to not use distilled water very little. 
And alkaline water is kind of the other side of that. People are forcing the water to be alkaline. That's not so good either. We just want basic old spring water. Uh, this is the water that comes from nature. You know, even rain water is good, uh, as long as it's not running off the roof, things like that. And uh, another kind of waters are fine, but you have to know what you're doing with them too. So that's enough for me tonight. I hope that was some good information. We're going to try to keep these short, but still give you some good information that you can use right away. And we're going to, again, do these every uh, Monday night at 6.15, pretty close in there. And uh, we also want to make sure people know that we have free uh, consultations available. If you want to know what we do in our office to help with whatever problems you're having, because again, most of the problems that are in the body are because the body can't heal itself, and we break those barriers so the body can heal itself up. So we can turn this over to Dr. Chip to have some more great information. Everybody have a great week, and we'll see you next Monday. Dr. Chip. Thank you. Sure. All right, everybody. Summer fun. Let's have a little fun here. Okay, so I'm Dr. Chip, and let's get to it. Uh, so uh, Dr. Mark explained a little bit more about the... Um, hydration aspects of how to stay healthy during the, the summertime here, of course. We're going to get into the warmer weather, uh, warmer months here, so it's good to uh, make sure that we're supporting our body to, again, stay healthy and um, stay well. So uh, I'm going to go through a couple of different things here, too. It could be a little bit more hydration, but uh, just some fun facts here, too. So uh, breathing fun facts. Did you know that and we inhale 2 million liters of air per day? Within seconds, it's transported to every cell in your body, and you can't live very long without it. So what does that mean? It means breathing is a pretty important thing. So uh, really, we want to make sure that we're uh, doing that you know, here and there, maybe even seeing how we're breathing throughout the day, so that we can kind of get a, a good measurement of where we're at. Uh, now, there are different aspects that affect your breathing, so we'll kind of go into that a little bit more, too. Uh, but isn't this kind of an amazing fun fact? Isn't it amazing that your body is doing this almost on autopilot? That it's able to do this very well. It's done this for thousands. Well, you know, as we as it evolves here and there, about you know hundreds or thousands of years. But it's very smart. There is this intelligence within our body that's coordinating all these systems. So again, are we able to allow this intelligence to really bring forth a good, healthy, and uh, well body here? So again, we talk about two is that our body has this innate healing capacity. It's that really it's our body's ability to adapt to things. So when our adapt adaptation is off, then that's going to be going to have a hard time to, to be healthy, to stay well. So you can kind of see here three kinds of stress. You have your physical, your trauma, nutritional, chemical, and emotional thoughts. Now, uh, so again, the main thing is that we don't, uh, sometimes it's not what we uh, start doing, but what we stop doing. And so when we are able to get rid of or uh, get rid of these blocks or these stresses, then again, our bodies are able to heal. Now, obviously, we all have stress, which is okay. Uh, we'll, we'll have different levels of stress uh, throughout our lives here too, even throughout the week. But the main thing, like we said, is how your body adapts to it. So we're going to take a look at this. So again, our brain is uh, structured in a way to help us sense things. So you can kind of say that this is kind of part of our nervous system, the central nervous system. And now we have, or we have an, uh, an autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system just means that those systems that are working without our uh, voluntary, you know, our awareness of it, uh, it's doing this on automatic, uh, automatically. So uh, what we're what we're saying here is that this system, this nervous system, is actually dictating a lot of the different processes that are going on in our bodies. So you can see that the autonomic nervous system has two different modes, uh, what science is showing here. So again, we have our fight, flee, or fight mode. This is our sympathetic mode. And then the parasympathetic mode is our rest and digest. So again, very simple explanation there. So it's just really, again, how our, our nervous system is able to go back and forth. So when you can when you think about it our breathing is that say that we are trying to run away from something it could be a big old tiger or a bear or anything like that we're going to start using a lot of our muscles to breathe and we're going to breathe from up here we're going to try to use a lot of different things to actually get that breath in and so it's because that we're 
we're not trying to breathe down here where we're rested, we're digesting our foods. We're going to use a lot of uh, blood to shunt and get to our, our arms, our legs, so that we're either to fight, to flee, or uh, hide there. So, but again, we go shift it back to the other side here. When we want to rest, sleep, digest our foods, this is where we want to be at there. So um, these two modes are good, uh, but sometimes we're kind of shifted into our, our sympathetic or our fight or flight mode too much of the time. And when that is happening, and when our nervous system is not being able to be regulated properly, that's when we start having issues. That's kind of those, those blocks or those stresses that we need to be able to uh, alleviate or decrease. Or like you said, it's our body's ability to adapt to it. So just like somebody that goes into the goes to work out, if they were going to go and work out and, and lift really heavy weight on the first day, they might tear something, they might injure themselves. Their body is not going to be able to adapt to that. Uh, but if they were being, have been working out for a long time, they're building up to it, and they lift that weight, then their body can actually handle it. So kind of same thing. So again, breathing is uh, important. Our nervous system is actually dictating how our breathing goes. But the funny thing, or the cool thing, is that breathing is an aspect that we can have that when uh, our breathing happens all the time, that's kind of part of that autonomic nervous system here, uh, but we are, have the ability to regulate our own breathing voluntarily. So that can actually help to balance out the nervous system back. So it's this, a nice, nice tool that we have to be able to do that. Uh, so quick tip on breathing is, again, oxygen to the body, of course, that's important. Focus uh, really is that, um, just like athletes or professionals, all that too, when you really focus on your breathing, it helps to bring you back and to not be so scatterbrained or scattered mind there too. Slow and steady wins the race. Again, uh, when in doubt, slow and steady. Uh, and then diaphragm, again, really trying to breathe from back, uh, down here rather than up here all the time. And then your intention, your intention of your breath, of being able to relax, being able to calm down, setting the intention of the day to the work, all that too. Summer fun, recreation, play, get outside, sunlight. Again, these are all good things that for some reason we have started to uh, kind of con condition to think that our bodies just kind of break down over time, that these diseases that we get are just like bugs in the air. Uh, but a lot of these health issues that we have here in the U.S. and around the country or around the world is are chronic health issues. These are not things that uh, are acute injuries. They're not things that come out of nowhere. This is your body's inability to adapt to things over time. And so when that happens, we start having symptoms because our body is showing us that something is going on that we need to address. And so that's why we need to be able to regulate our nervous system. That's why we need to support our body with good foods, good water, all these different things so that we can bring that health back. And these are important aspects here too because it's helping our nervous system to actually regulate itself better too. So sunlight, getting outside, again, breathing, all that too, and then recreation and play. These things are good for not, uh, not only our bodies, but our minds to relax there too. So a healthy brain, healthy body. Uh, you can see kind of a logical, creative fun. Uh, and so a lot, of, a lot of times too, if, we, if we're doing a lot of good, healthy brain activities, it actually helps our, our body in different ways. Uh, and then, too, if we're doing fun activities with our body, it's helpful for our brain. So, again, a back and forth there. I don't want to take too long here. Uh, so, benefits. Uh, work, yeah, so benefits of kind of getting outside, play, all that creativity is working different muscles. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're walking, you're biking, you're playing sports, you're kayaking, everything like that. Working out something or doing something different actually helps us to kind of shift gears and our minds, to, our brains to actually uh, use different neural networks so that, again, it actually helps our, bo our bodies to uh, regulate better there too. Uh, and so and the main thing too, uh, at the bottom here, it says enjoy it. And so a lot of times is that we try to force ourselves to do things, which again, it has a, a right of its own to do something that we don't like to do. Uh, we do something that, um, that other people do all the time, but we just don't have like 
we don't have the, the passion to do it. It could be going to the gym or working out. Maybe that's not your thing. Maybe your thing is playing pickleball, you know, really hardcore pickleball. So that, that's a good exercise. It's a good activity. Long walks, all those things are really good. So don't, if, again, if something is good for you, if something that you like to do uh, is good or you like it more than other things, don't compare yourself to other per, another person that likes to do something else. Enjoy what you're doing and what you have fun doing. Uh, again, get out of your head, allows you to stop thinking, games, movies, books. Be creative. Do things that you like to do or enjoy doing or something new. Join a, a different class or get out there and try something something different. Another one is challenge yourself. <laughs> Gain a skill, learn something new, talk to someone you don't know. Uh, so th again, these are kind of more of uh, doing some new things. Now again, it could be that uh, you're, you don't like to do it so much, but again, a challenge is something that your brain has to actually get past the fear process of thinking that, oh, what's this, what are people going to think about? Or it's actually just gaining that, that, uh, that resiliency so that when your brain knows that, oh, you can do some new things, you're less able, or you're more likely to be able to do that more easily. So again, do harder tasks or to take on different responsibilities better. Uh, so, and then again, mindset, life's too short not to enjoy it. So again, just making sure that we're able to enjoy our summertime here, have a little fun. Of course, too, you gotta, you gotta do the things that you need to do, you know, different work and all that too. So, uh, but again, when in, when you can, when you can, especially in summertime, it's always good to, uh, hang around or get, you know, out there, have some fun with some different people and do things that you like to do outside. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of skip that part since, Dr. Mark explained that pretty well. And so again, uh, we're going to have, we're going to end this here. So again, uh, you can always follow us at Natural Health Quincy IL at Facebook, YouTube, right on Instagram. Uh, our email list, you here, you can subscribe to it at our naturalhealthquincy.com. The number is 217-228-2040. And we're located at 2000 Jefferson Street in Quincy, Illinois. So we're trying to uh, implement these health shops again back on Mondays uh, every week here at 6.15, we're kind of late today, but we're gonna to try to get this information out to you because we know that a lot of times people just have so much uh, information out there, they don't know really where to turn, and we're gonna to try to give you the best that we can. So uh, thanks again so much for watching, and stay healthy, my friends.